Well, good morning. So it's a new week, that's a new project. Uh, my name is Jim, I'm the owner of Sprague Wood Turning. Welcome. Uh, so this week, uh, hopefully you enjoyed uh, watching me fail last week trying to do that pewter copper inlay. It's something that I'll revisit in the future, but for now I'm just gonna put it on the back burner. Lots of other inlay ideas to, to uh, move forward with. So this week is actually a little strange. We haven't done anything like this. It's not turning, but this here is a birch crotch and it kind of looks like an alien. So what we're gonna do is run this um, through the uh, drum sander, flatten it on both sides, and probably end up doing some inlay work in it up here between its eyes where its nose is. Um, it should be, uh, should be pretty interesting. There's some small worm holes on this, so we'll have to fill in, maybe there'll be warts, whatever. So that's what we're gonna do this week. Uh, now, I, you know, I probably should do this on a, make up a router sled and, and do it that way, but by the time I get that, I don't, I don't typically do this kind of stuff. So um, by the time I get that all set up, I'll be all done on the drum sander anyway. So anyway, that's what we're gonna do. So if you haven't subscribed, please consider doing so. And of course, anytime you give my videos a thumbs up, it certainly helps me on YouTube as well. So anyway, let's get to the drum sander and um, get this cleaned off and see what we're looking at. Well, if that doesn't look like an alien, I don't know what does. Uh, anyway, there's some real loose stuff in here. Anyway, I'm going to remove all this stuff, and I'm just going to use a probably flat tip screwdriver. Yeah, I could leave this and harden it with CA, with thin CA, but uh, I don't know. That's not my style. I like some some color in there. The other thing that's really cool: uh, these cracks from drying almost look like you know blood vessels in the eye. And of course, here's the mouth. I mean, it, it's almost perfect. So we'll, I'm probably gonna inlay this with uh, soapstone, I'm thinking. I just have to figure out what type of soapstone I'm gonna use. Anyway, you get the idea. I'll bring it back um, when I'm done here. Okay, so I've got all the bark out, um, but I wanna clean out this inlay area so that I don't have any kind of bark residue left over when uh, when we do the inlay. And um, so you've, if if you watch my videos, you know that I've, I use a lot of these, these burrs. This is a Typhoon bit. Um, it goes in a Dremel tool. And uh, this is another burr that you can get at Lee Valley as well. And anyway, there'll be links in the description for those if you want to get them. Um, the other thing I find when I'm cleaning bark out of areas like this, I tend to use, um, I tend to find that a flat tip screwdriver is better than a chisel. It doesn't seem to dig in as much when you're using it. So I just use different sizes till I get the majority of the material out. And then I use these burrs to clean it out. So after that's done, I'll give the outside a quick sanding with 80 grit and we'll look at what we need to do for inlays and we'll go from there. I know there's some here on the face, but I know that they probably grow out on the edges of this too. So that's what we're doing.
Okay, so after much debate, um, and again, this is a personal preference thing. Of course, this is birch, and ideally I'd like to have some birch branches to inlay this, but I don't have any that are kiln dried. I only have really large ones like this. Um, so I think what I'm going to do, and I thought originally, oh, I'll, I'll just do the mouth kind of in a dark soapstone, this area here, and that might look kind of cool, and I'll mimic this here and then I'll fill this in with a, a bluish type soapstone that I have and I'm like ah, I don't know um, then so these are actually purple sand cherry the bush and these are kiln dried so they're not going to shrink and they're uh, really pretty wood a little hard to see here but, but anyway I think what I'm going to do is kind of just put these in here like this and work my way down and fill this area in with branches like so and then um, I'll set them with the glue. We'll run this back through the drum sander <clears throat> so that they're nice and level with the surface on both sides. And then we'll carry on with the inlay. Okay, what do you think? You know, and again, this is a personal choice thing. Um, so anyway, all the inlay materials that I ever use is held in with thin CA, thin CA glue. This is the Starbond stuff. There's a link in the description for 10% off. Just use uh, code INLAYGYM at checkout and you'll get your 10% discount. So I've got this pulled off of my router matting. I don't want any glue getting on that. And I'm just going to saturate these. Lock them in place. They're actually fairly snug in there already. And as you can see, hopefully that's going to be dark like that when the inlay is done. Again, accelerator from Starbond. And I initially was, when I, I said I was going to run through the drum sander, I'm not going to bother. I'll just use uh, my, my six inch sander and I'll sand these back. Just give a little bit of glue on this side as well. So just don't want these to move anywhere. There. I think that's alright. Okay, so I've covered this once before. I'll do it again because uh, I keep getting asked, how do I make my inlay material? So this is a block of soapstone here in Canada. There's a, there's a number of resources you can get it from. Uh, this came from Lee Valley. So that's where I get it. Um, the other place is Sculptural Supply in Toronto. Both the links will be in the description below. And um, so, four inch plastic conduit this just helps hold the material from flying over the place when you hammer it this is a steel plate fine sieve strainer so what i do is i put this stuff in here hammer it all up bring it over brush it over into this and then sift out the finer material. We want the finer material, not the coarse material. It's not really a huge deal with this because it's a very large inlay, so we can use bigger pieces. Um, but near the top, I like to see just a fine layer of soapstone. That way it's more even. So anyway, eye protection, hair protection. You could buy a, a small little hammer mill if you wish. You could make a hammer mill. You could, you know, get a, a round pipe with a pipe that fits inside of it or like a, a solid bar and then pick it up and drop it on it. And that would also work as well. It's 
It's real technical. And that stuff there, that's that's small enough that I'm not real concerned about it. So we'll put that all in the bottle. There, I'll just keep going till I get my container filled and I'll bring you back in when we're ready for inlay. Okay, so here we are at the inlay table. Um, this is the back side. I guess this is gonna be a wall hanging. That's what I'm gonna do with this. Uh, so this is the back side. And what I'm gonna do is just take some duct tape and fill this, or I should say cover this. And I'm going well past the opening. Last thing you want is to have that CA glue come out past this and onto anything because you don't want it to stick to anything and CA glue is expensive so you don't want to waste it either. And I've actually taken CA glue and uh, there's a bunch of cracks here so I filled those all in and then sanded it back. I'll just put one across as well. There, hopefully that will prevent anything from leaking out. So this is a this is a bit of a waste to fill this all in with uh, soapstone. So I've cut just a, this is a piece of pine. So what I'm going to do is put in about a half inch of material so that you see the blue soapstone on the back side of this. Then I'll put this in here and that will take up a lot of space. And then there'll be at least a half inch of soapstone on top of it. That way we're not uh, wasting a lot of soapstone and CA glue, again, because it is expensive. And initially, like I was saying earlier, I want only fine material for the bottom, or the, the, the area that's gonna be showing. The coarser material is fine, it can go in the center, because you're never gonna see it. So what I'm gonna do is probably put this in at, oh, I don't know, maybe a quarter of an inch or so, somewhere around there. And then hit it with the thin CA glue again. And then I'll build it up in layers. Again, tapping it. Of course, it's important around these branches that you get the soapstone in there first before the glue does uh, because when this sets, if you don't have the material in there, you'll have clear CA glue on the bottom side of this. This is going to take a fair bit of glue. So this is a full two ounces. We'll use this and then I'll keep track of how much glue I'm using if you're curious. And if you wish you can kind of move it around make sure that it's good and saturated. And again, you want to use this in a well-ventilated area. The fumes that come off of this can be very aggressive. I think I'll put my spacer block in now. So there's two ounces. So I've never really uh, shown this before. Uh, when I get glue, I always get it in 16 ounce bottles. Uh, I just find it's easier. Uh, I believe it's cheaper to buy it in those kind of quantities. And it comes with a bag with um, two ounce bottles. I think these are two ounces, yeah. And within that bag, you also get these little tips and a pair of gloves. 
which I never use, but you know. So anyway, I fill these up. You know, I usually got two or three of these on the go. So I just keep filling them up as I need them. Throw some of this coarser stuff in there now. You know, I'm really only going to plane off probably, a, you know, a sixteenth of an inch on each side of this. So you'll never see this stuff that's down in here anyway. So I'll leave this overnight and tomorrow it should be good in cured. And then I'll run it through the drum sander. And what I will probably do as well is in all likelihood, I'll take that that six inch a random orbital air powered sander and um, kind of grind this back a bit. There. That is good and wet. It should be no problems. There shouldn't be any voids in there. Um, so yeah, I just want to do around the eyes. I initially thought about grooving out those cracks and then inlaying some sort of red there, but I don't know. There, I think that's all of the cracks. I've just got to go around and fill all of these um, ant holes or worm holes or whatever they are. And then we will run it through the drum sander tomorrow. Till then, see you then. Okay, so this is the second filling. A little bit of stuff needs to be done in here. For the most part, it's solid. Uh, I believe this is going to be the front face. I'm also going to, I don't know if you can see these radial cracks here, I plan on filling those in again. So I'll give this whole thing a good dosing of glue after I get the uh, soapstone in it. So I'll do that on this side and the back side and on the side here. Some of these need to be filled in as well. I'll go around and check all these. And then when that's done, we will run this through the drum sander again and then see if it needs any more. And if it does, we'll do that and then hand sand. I'm using a homemade downdraft table if you're curious what I'm working on here. I think I do explain its uh, construction in one of my videos on boards. Been a while since I made that one though. And uh, also, I said I'd tell you how much glue we're up to. Again, you got to use the thin uh, CA glue. Um, so far, we're up to four ounces. So I think that's what it's going to take to do this project. It definitely looks like a couple of eyeballs. There, I'll let that sit for a couple of minutes. Hit it with the accelerator, do the other side. And then we'll run them through the drum sander once more and then hand it. All right, finish time. So everything sanded to 220, it's nice and smooth. Uh, what I'm gonna use is actually, uh, this is leftover Minwax um, polyurethane. That's from a previous project. This is going to be a wall hanging, so I'm not so concerned about uh, it being food safe. And I'm assuming this will take probably three coats. It's all in grain, so it soaks up the finish really, really, good uh, that's for sure um i could have so when i run this through the drum sander 
I ran it through at 60 grit and I could have put on a 120 belt and then ran it through again and then hand sand it but you know I just said well geez I'm only doing one thing so I'm not going to bother switching the bolts around so that's why I didn't do that so we just want to saturate this really good make sure you hit the edges as well just want to make sure I get that edge really good if you're wondering what that noise is that's the fridge kiln running cooling itself down there put that in my clean room to dry and then we'll put the second coat on okay so it's the next day um, these are the very fine um, scotch bright pads and uh, this is my Milwaukee sander uh, it's variable speed so when I'm doing the, um, the scotch bright pads I like to leave it on three when I'm sanding I usually get it up on six so that way we'll do both sides and the edges and then put the second coat on Here's the second coat. So I'm gonna I'm gonna do this the same way that I do my uh, my serving boards. Uh, but my serving boards, of course, would get the wood bowl finish on it and not the polyurethane. Um, so anyway, when this sets, I will um, use that Scotch Bright pad again, and then put my homemade wax on it. There, sweep off the excess. I think it definitely looks like an alien. Anyway, once I get the wax on here, we'll finish this video up. Okay, so we're at the last step. So this is a uh, mineral oil beeswax that I make. And I know I originally said I was gonna put three coats of poly on this. I don't think it's needed. This has a nice pleasant smell to it and it's not like it's going to be used for function so it's not real um, it's not going to have really any heavy use it's just going to be sitting on the wall. So I think that this is a good fit for it. My neighbor building a garage we're not under attack. There you go that's one side, we'll get the other side done, then we'll talk about it. <laughs> well, what do you think? Pretty cool, eh? I think, I think it looks very alien-ish. Maybe uh, Squidward-ish, if you know what I mean, from Spongebob. Um, so yeah, 19 inches across, 16 inches this way, white birch, and it's got some spalting in it. And of course, here's the pith of the two trees, and of course the crotch area. These are purple sand cherries again, and of course soapstone. And you know, there's you. I could have gone any number of ways with this. I could have completely filled this with branches. I could have maybe brought this up to here to make it look like a nose and a mouth. Um, I thought about putting some brass, um, not brass, copper across here to make like stitches. Uh, you know, the possibilities are in this. It's up to you what you can come up with. Uh, one thing I forgot to do was sign the edge of it, so I'll be doing that. So anyway, I think that's the side that I'm going to hang out. Got to be careful, this thing's really slippery because it's smooth. This, of course, is the back side, and it's finished just as good as the front side is. And everything is sealed up well, again, with that polyurethane. I didn't see the need to use the wood bowl finish from General Finishes because I have no intentions of using this for food. So polyurethane uh, was a good uh, choice for that. And, um, yeah, let me know in the comments. What do you think? Um, totally cool. And, you know, this is the main, one of the main reasons why... I did this it was to demonstrate that you can do all this inlay work on flat stuff too on all on all your flat work so don't be afraid if you get a crack in something to go ahead with this kind of technique to fill it in um, trust me there'll be nobody else on the block that's got one so anyway that's it uh, if you haven't subscribed please consider doing so and of course anytime you give my videos a thumbs up that certainly helps with the analytics so next week we'll be back on the lathe I'll do another inlay I won't let you know what that is right now um let'd be a surprise and that's it so anyway take care stay safe and hopefully we'll see you next week and let me know in the comments what you think of this anyway see ya